Now that we've done an overview of TTEs, let's talk about the specifics of the eight standard views for a TTE. I went over this briefly in the first video, but here are the eight standard views in a basic standard TTE. What I want to do for each of these views is the following three things. Number one, give you an idea of the angle of the cut. Two, break down the view and show you the major structures and chambers involved. And three, I'll tie this back into breaking down the left ventricle into 16 separate parts. The first view is the parasternal ventricular long axis view, which is at the parasternal position. Picture that you're looking at the heart from the lateral side, which I'm showing here, and so the cut across the heart that you're trying to make with this view is across the left ventricle and aortic valve, like this. Here's an example of what this view looks like in embryo echo. Since this is from the parasternal view, the heart chamber at the top will always be the right ventricle. The left ventricle is here, the left atrium is here, and the aorta is here. Other important structures in this view include the mitral valve, which is here, as well as the aortic valve, which is here. Now, tying this back to the 16 parts of the left ventricle, the angle you are making with this cut is like this through the left ventricle, so that you are looking at these four parts of the left ventricle with this specific view. Notice that you're not looking at the apex of the heart at all, which is why I omitted the apex here completely. The second view is the short axis view of the aortic valve, which is also at the parasternal position. If you're looking at the heart from the front, the cut across the heart is here, right where the aortic valve is. In a real echo, the view looks like this. Again, since this view is from the parasternal position, the right ventricular outflow tract is up top. The right atrium is here, and the left atrium is here. The aortic valve, which is the main purpose of this image, is right here in the middle. The tricuspid valve can also be seen around this area, and the pulmonic valve around here. But these aren't always visualized well and aren't as important as the aortic valve. You're not really looking at any part of the left ventricle with this view, so none of these parts are covered here. The third view is the short axis basal view at the parasternal position. If you're looking at the heart from the front, the cut across the heart is about here, right below the mitral valve. Here's an example of this view on a Rio echo. We're still at the parasternal position, so the right ventricle is up here, and the left ventricle is here. You should be able to see the mitral valves within the left ventricle. In this view, you're looking at the basal parts of the left ventricle, so you're looking at these six parts of the left ventricle. The fourth view is the short axis mid-level view at the parasternal position. This view is pretty much the same as the previous one, except that you're looking mainly at the mid-level of the left ventricle instead of the basal level. In a real echo, again, it's from the parasternal position, so the right ventricle is up top. The left ventricle is here, and since this is at the middle of the left ventricle, you'll also be able to see papillary muscles instead of the mitral valve. In this view, you're looking at the mid-level parts of the left ventricle, so you're looking at these six parts of the left ventricle. The fifth view is the short axis apical view at the parasternal position. Again, very similar to the previous one, it's just that this cut is again further down in the left ventricle. Here's an example of an actual echo of this cut. For reasons we've already talked about, the right ventricle is up here and the left ventricle is here. Since we're looking at the apical parts of the left ventricle, you're looking at these four specific parts of the left ventricle. The sixth view is the apical four-chamber view, which is at the apical position here. The cut across the heart in this view is about here if you're looking at the heart from the front, and your goal in this view is to see all four chambers of the heart. Here's an example of a real echo of this cut. Because you're at the apical position of the heart, the ventricles are going to be at the top. The left ventricle will be on the right side and the right ventricle will be on the left side. From there, it should be easy to identify the left atrium and the right atrium respectively. You also get a good look at the mitral valve as well as the tricuspid valve. 
Tying this back to the 16 parts of the left ventricle, the angle of the cut you're making across the left ventricle in this view is like this, which means that you are visualizing these six parts of the left ventricle. The seventh view is the apical two chamber view, which is also at the apical position. The cut across the heart in this view is best seen from the lateral view of the heart. Your goal in this view is to visualize the left ventricle and the left atrium. Here's an echo of this view. Again, since you're at the apical position, the ventricles are going to be up top. And since this view looks at the left side of the heart, this will be the left ventricle and the left atrium will be here. The mitral valve will be seen in between. The angle of the cut across the left ventricle that you're making in this view is like this, which means that you are visualizing these six parts of the left ventricle. The eighth and last view is the apical long axis, which is at the apical position. This view is the exact same view as the parasternal long axis view, except that it's rotated 90 degrees. Not surprisingly then, the cut across the heart is the same as the parasternal long axis, which is across the left ventricle in a auric valve. Here's an echo example of this view. Because it's an apical view, the left ventricle will be up top, the left atrium will be down here, the aorta will be here, the aortic valve will be here, and the mitral valve will be here. If you compare the apical long axis to the parasternal long axis, you can clearly see that it's really the same view, just rotating 90 degrees. I won't cover which of the 16 parts of the left ventricle this covers again, but if you've been keeping track, you'll notice that by the end of these eight different views, you've looked at each of the 16 parts of the left ventricle at least once from two different angles. Pretty cool stuff, right? Now, here are our take-home points. Thank you for watching.